I am MFA Apau, and this is the probe. Tonight, unless there's a dramatic U-turn from government or the finance ministry, which we are told is making that strong push for the implementation of the 15% value-added tax on electricity on non-life consumers in Ghana, there will be a disruption on the labor front. There's no clear indication on when implementation will start, even though the December 12 letter to NETCO and ECG was to start in January 2024. Organized Labour says there must be a reversal of that decision or face thereof. Tonight we're engaging Labour, especially when they were asked to exercise restraint. And then their meeting on Friday revealed that there will be a series of action to force government to actually withdraw. So we are looking at that 15% VAT for non-lifeline residential consumption. And this is where all the controversy is starting from. And we'll take a look at the details in terms of what it entails. So from 1992 all the way to 2022, which is the last, when we talk about changes in lifeline threshold, it started in 1992, we know it's 50, that's in kilowatts per hour for a month. And then 1994, it came up to 100, all the way to 100, that was the threshold. In 1998, we had a threshold of 50. Then it came back down to 2022 in 30. That's what we got, 30 in 2022. And that's the last in terms of data from the PRLC and the World Bank. So when we talk about lifeline threshold, this is where we are, 30 kilowatts per hour. So moving on, we know that um, this is the, the looming demonstration series of protests, not just a demonstration. They say from tomorrow, a number of actions will be taken to force the hand of government for a complete reversal. For them, a reversal or nothing else. So TUC and we know 35 other unions, 35 labor unions, are threatening to demonstrate on February 13, a day before the Love Day, is where they chose to do this, over 15% VAT on electricity. We'll be delving into all the issues, and we know that the finance ministry called for a restraint. There was a letter that was in circulation asking them uh, to exercise restraint as they talk to all stakeholders for a dialogue on this particular 15%. There was a letter that was written uh, to NETCO and ECG as far back as December uh, 12, 2023. That letter was communicated. And for Labour, we heard Angel Kabonu earlier on radio and on TV asking for a written withdrawal of that initial directive to NETCO and ECG before anything else for them, negotiation was not on the table, even though they were asked to exercise restraint whilst uh, work was done on this particular 15% VAT. We've also been hearing from ECG, uh, the ECG boss himself was right here in the studios, and for them, they didn't have the system to start the implementation of this particular 15%. But it doesn't look like that was enough for labor. So these are issues that we'll be delving into. But what happens if this 15% VAT is applied? If you are currently paying about 50 CDs, let me say 50 CDs per month, if that's the bill you pay when it comes to electricity, once we start this implementation of the VAT, you are paying 57.5 um, CDs. That's what you'll be paying, 57.5. If you're paying 100 CDs currently, you are looking to pay 115 Ghana CDs. If you pay 200 CDs, which most of you pay, you would be looking at 230 Ghana CDs. That's a calculation that a research team have been able to put together. If you pay 500 CDs, then you'll be paying 575 Ghana CDs once we start implementation of this VAT. That is, if there is no withdrawal of this particular uh, you know, communication to NETCO and ECG. And that is to say, if ECG finds a way to start this implementation, even though they told us they are not able to implement it because of the systems that are not in place. So that's what it looks like. But what's our current minimum wage uh, for the ordinary worker, at least the, the, the local worker, uh, the base pay that you're getting is 18.15. That's the minimum wage, at least. That's what was agreed at the last tripartite committee meeting. Monthly salary for the average Ghanaian, 80% of public sector workers and below 3,000 CDs. And that's according to the Ghana Statistical Service, a lot of data that they've been putting out recently. So the monthly salary for the average person, 544.5. That's what it looks like. So um, a typical lifeline household. Many have argued that it doesn't look like we have a typical lifeline household as we speak. But what is the definition when we talk about a lifeline or a household? It means that you only use two bulbs, these onion bulbs, just two of them. That's what you use. You use no fridge. There's no fridge in that household. And then one TV set. That's a typical lifeline household. But how many households do we have now 
that use just one TV and two bulbs with no fridge at all. That's what the argument has been in terms of um, who this applies to. And we know that according to the World Bank, majority of Ghanaians consume between 51 to 300 kilowatts per hour per month. And that's the data that we know. But the threshold currently for the lifeline is supposed to be 30. That's according to the 2022 reports that we have from the PURC and the World Bank. Well, these are issues that we'll be delving into uh, tonight right here on the show. My guests uh, joining me via Zoom, some also joining us via phone. I have the Executive Secretary of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, Isaac Bampoado, at least, is part of those. Um, the leadership of this will be having the National Association of Graduate Teachers, Angel Kabonu, also joining us. Professor Mamudu Akudugu is president of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAC. We also have Dr. Kwabna Donko, is a ranking member, Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprises Committee in Parliament. He will be giving us his take on this. I also have the privilege to be joined also via Zoom is lawyer Bawadua. We all know him as a former NLC boss. He has delved into that space a lot and will let us know. We are hearing in the last uh, few hours also that Cabinet has decided that uh, there should be a withdrawal of this VAT um, in spite of uh, the Ministry of Finance's push for this to be implemented because we know that it's part of um, the requirement from the IMF government is uh, to generate more revenue uh, through removal of VAT exemptions. And we know that power consumption is part of the exemption bracket. So what will happen then since that Labour is insisting that um, that should be removed? How then is government going to be able to make shore up these revenue uh, through the removal of VAT exemptions? We'll get to know all that and more and whether Labour has some options that government can take instead of this implementation. Guta has also joined. We've been hearing from a number of stakeholders on this particular move uh, to implement this 15% VAT on electricity. Do stay with me. A quick turnaround. Then we get talking. We'll return with that particular press conference that was held uh, by organized Labour and the announcement of the series of actions that will be taking if government does not reverse this particular 15% communication to ECG and NETCO. Do stay with me. This is The Probe. Welcome once again. We are taking a decision that the only reason why we will not embark on that demonstration is when government withdraws. And that we are not in any position to have any discussion on anything. If government doesn't want us to demonstrate against it, they should do what? Withdraw. If they withdraw, they should inform us officially. If we don't hear any official communication on the withdrawal, on the 13th of February, all workers in this country, former and informal, public and private, are stopping work and we are going to demonstrate to government that we can never be taken for granted again. That is the end. And, and, and we gave an ultimatum of 31st January, which elapsed on, uh, today's, on Wednesday. We gave that ultimatum to government to withdraw that letter. As we speak today, today is second, we have not seen any letter withdrawing that directive. In between the time we issued this statement and now, ECG itself has come out to say that they are not ready to even implement this kind of uh, VAT. But that's not our matter. It's between them and their government. This afternoon we met to, in, in that statement, we said if by 31st, government had not withdrawn this um, directive to ECG and NETCO, we will meet here and we will advise ourselves. So this afternoon we have met here and we have advised ourselves. It is that advice that we are going to communicate to the press. Our advice is very simple. We have advised ourselves that this government is taking Ghanaians for granted. And so we are going to lead a very massive demonstration in all the regional capitals, the 60 regional capitals of Ghana, on the 13th 
of February. That will be Tuesday. That is uh, this Tuesday's week. We have taken this decision firmly and we have appointed a committee to plan it. And you heard the TUC Secretary General, uh, Dr. Yaobane, um, at that press conference on Friday. So whilst that press conference was happening, we are told about a cabinet meeting that was also underway. And there's a push uh, for the withdrawal of this particular VAT and yet to be communicated officially. But we don't know if that has been communicated to Labour just yet. But let me bring in, uh, thankfully, via Zoom, Isaac Bampuado, Executive Secretary of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, joins us via Zoom. We'll also have uh, Professor Mamadou uh, Kudugu, is President of the Invest Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, also joining us. Vazum and lawyer Bawadia, a former NLC boss, also joining us. Vazum. We'll have Dr. Kobna Donko uh, join us uh, via phone um, subsequently, and then also uh, hopefully to hear from government on this. Um, they've given us a word that they may um, join us on the show tonight. As and when they do, we'll get to hear uh, from government on this. But, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on the probe. Vazum, if you can unmute so we can hear you. Good evening, welcome. Good evening. Thank Good you. Good evening, and thank you for having us. Thank you so much, Professor Kudugu, also. Well, I'll start with you, um, uh, Mr. Bampuado. Really, um, you were giving a letter, at least. There was a letter that was in circulation by the Finance Ministry asking for a restraint uh, from Labour whilst um, they, you know, engage all stakeholders in this matter when it comes to this 15% VAT on electricity. Is this the restraint that government asked you to give? Well, if you are talking of a letter for... Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. then I don't know what you're talking about because that is the so-called press release that they gave. That was not what they said. If my memory is right, what was said in that letter was that they were going to engage us for our buy-in. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, tell us whether you like it or not. We're going to implement it. That's why we said we're not going to have any meeting with anybody because their letter was clear we want to we are going to get your buy in and that's not what we said we said simple withdraw this letter withdraw this directive to in the uh, ecg and uh, uh, uh whatever the other one nepad or something netco, I don't know. netco. so that is it mm. netco yeah yeah mm. and and since that meeting on friday i bet um, your phones have been buzzing have we had any official communication that you were looking for from government on a withdrawal, a reversal? Because we are told whilst you were having that meeting, cabinet was also meeting on this particular issue and VAT was high on the agenda for cabinet. Has there been any communication over the weekend from Friday? We have not had any, any, any communication. You know, we must be clear with what we want. When we are saying V8, what's V8? V80 is value added tax. Mm -hmm. So how can you put a V80 on electric consumption by residents. It's unheard of. What value have we added to that electricity, in a prepaid electricity, and then you say you're adding fat? You know, I don't know where they got this thing from. It's a major policy failure. VAT, VAT on electricity, prepaid electricity. What's the meaning of VAT? Value added tax. They must, they must go back to the, uh, the uh, and, th and rethink. This is a major policy failure. How can you name this in even VAT? You know, it means that they don't care. They don't care. Just throw uh, uh, something at them and then this time I'm not going to take it any long. We have not heard anything from government. Our demonstration is coming on live on 13th February. And that's it. Mm. Well, well, we'll get to that demonstration and the series of actions that uh, you have put across. I will come to Professor Akudugu on this, but before I get to him, maybe the same question for you. The ECG boss was in this particular office, sat, sat right here in this studio, and mentioned that since that communication was given to them on December 12th, they've had no system in place to be able to implement this particular VAT. So for them, on their part, they cannot even uh, you know, implement it assistance now that's no assurance for labor it's no assurance what's that that is value added tax. so mm -hmm. ask that ecg boss what value have we added to the unless you are going to consume that you say you are going to charge 50 percent i'm a little it's simple as that that is value added tax. what value has been added you should tell us mm. we are not taking anything come 13th 
we are, we are asking for the letter should be withdrawn. Mm. Come 13 February, if the letter is not withdrawn, well, we'll give them the language they understand. Okay, we'll get to you uh, back on this. Professor Akudubu, let me bring you in on this as well. So uh, amongst all the issues that have been raised, I was asking um, Mr. Bampuado on this, um, the ECG boss at least has mentioned that they, for their part, at least they are supposed to be implementing this particular tax, yet they don't have systems in place to be able to implement it. So you should be rest assured they are not going to implement it. That's no assurance for labor, is it? Uh, good evening to your viewers and to everyone. Um, I think what the, the ECG chief executive said is a very big blow to the way that our policies are being made. What, what engagement went into, what thinking went into even fixing the tax in the first place, that the one who is to implement doesn't even have the capacity to be able to implement it. What, what, how do we make these policies? Those who see, sat down and thought about coming out with this VAT of 15% on electricity consumption by residents, residential users, what thinking went into it? What kind of consultations? What, who, are, who are the stakeholders they engaged? It appears that we, we, we keep doing this over and over and over again, that you go and sit down, just come out with any policy or any law, and then you force it down on our throats, and now do the engagements. How do you do that? Hmm. Why don't you engage first? And as uh, Senior Bampo already said, they've taken us for granted for too long. And I think that Ghana is our country, and we all love to, I mean, our country. But the way that people in position of power, you know, take these decisions and take the citizens for granted must stop. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we cannot make progress. Okay. Well, and so that, 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 that thinking that they don't even have the, the, the capacity to implement it and the rest of it is a non-starter. Mm -hmm. And that's it, that shows how uh, weak we are in terms of policy formulations and that we are not even well, you know, we don't think so much well about how these policies are going to be, the policies will make how they are going to be implemented by the implementer at the end of the day. Okay. And the, the, all that we're asking for is that complete withdrawal, just withdraw it and, and give us evidence that you've withdrawn it by writing to us and we're all good to go. Okay, well, so as it stands now, at least, um, organized labor, at least, we've heard from UTAG, we've heard from uh, CLOCKSAG, we've heard from TUC, at least, many of the labor unions, you are all one on this. But I want to find out if indeed, uh, Mr. Bampuado, you have the buy-in of all the 35 labor unions, so it's an organized labor action. All of you are aligned when it comes to this particular action you're taking against the 15% VAT? Yeah, all labor unions in Ghana, we have three federations. We have the TUC, we have Forum, we have uh, GFL. All, uh, all these federations are in agreement. Come 13th February, if the letter is not withdrawn, we are hitting the streets, and after that, it's a nationwide strike. Okay, so it looks like you have a number of actions that you have outlined. Starting tomorrow, we are told. So Maybe starting from tomorrow, we are, we, are, we are wearing our red bags. Mm -hmm. And then the next action will be on the 13th of uh, 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 February, where we start our demonstrations. Mm -hmm. After that, the next two days, we're going on our nationwide strike. Well, is there a particular reason or a particular choice, reason why we are choosing February 13? Oh, no, there's no particular choice. The only reason is that, you know, per law, you have to give notice to the police. Yeah, that's why we came to the 13th. So next week, tomorrow, we'll give notice to the police of our intention to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And that's just to fulfill the, the public order the act. That's why we chose the 30th, for not for any special reason. Mm. It's just to give notice to the police that we're going to demonstrate. Okay, but um, you know we've had um, demonstrations that have been uh, stopped for one reason or the other, not because you're not giving the permission, but at least the police will say maybe it's not in the interest or a good day uh, for that demonstration. I can assure you, I can assure you, the only thing that can stop us is a draw of this letter. Mm. The law is saying we should just notify the police. The police cannot tell us not to go on our demonstration. So we are just notifying them. That's what the law is saying. Hmm. 
The only thing that Canada can stop this demonstration mm. is a withdrawal from the finance ministry mm. of the directive to in the ECG and then in the, uh, whatever, the other one. To NEDCO. Well, you mentioned NEDCO. that it is supposed to be for informal and formal sector. Really, uh, one wonders, how are you hoping to bring in the, the, the private sector as well and the informal sector in this particular uh, series of protests? Uh, they are all on board. They were all at the meeting. All those seniors were at the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a decision that we all took. So they are all on board. The, the private, private sector is on board. All their leaders were there. So there is an organized labor that's informal and formal. Mm -hmm. All of us were at that meeting and we took that decision. That come 13th, we are demonstrating. From tomorrow, we are flying in red flags on our buildings and our own cells. It will be red. And I can assure you, we will bring everything to a standstill. Mm. I'm wondering how you're going to get the buy-in, especially uh, from the private sector, for all of wait, us to be wait, able to wait, this. wait till 13th February, and then you yourself will see the action. Mm. What, what kind of action uh, would this be, you'd say? Well, we are going to bring everything to a standstill. We are going to demonstrate. All workers in this country, including you, you're also a worker. If you care <laughs> for your rights, you should also be in the demonstration, you yourself. Because unless you tell me you're not a worker, you're also a worker. So I'm you should also be there. Should be there. I'm a worker, but some will say that you are paid, your pay is guaranteed uh, by government, the controller and accountant general. At least you've been there before, so you know how it works. At least um, about a one million or so of you will be unless, 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 unless you tell me that uh -huh. this fifteen percent VAT when it's implemented doesn't affect you. It will affect me, but I'm asking, yeah, exactly. what if so my employer sacks me? me? What if my employer sacks me, that, me, that, okay. me for, not, for not working that day? What happens? Well, if, if you think you've got a, uh, uh, you want to fight for your rights, mm. if you're fighting for your rights, then you must be part of the demonstration. Because this is, you are fighting for your rights. Mm. And that's it. Yes, all the private sector, they've assured us they are going to sensitize their members. And it sounds right that this is something that affects everybody. No, it doesn't affect only public sector. It also affects the private sector. Unless you are telling that there's a, a special tax for only public sector and not private sector. It affects all of us. So duty is on us to demonstrate on the 13th of February. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, people are going to come out. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to those who say that you are being unfair uh, to the government, knowing the times when, that when we're in. Make, if I may finish, uh, Mr. Bampuado, that knowing yeah. the times that we are in and the fact that it's an IMF requirement for some tax exemptions to be removed, and it includes, um, you know, energy sector, you know, debt amongst others. But really, if you f twist the arms of government in this manner, some will say you are we being unfair are not, to the employer. We are, not, we are not twisting the arm of government. What we are saying that respect because respect. Mm -hmm. You come up with such a policy, no meeting, no stakeholder consultation. You're taking us for granted. That's what we are saying. You can't take us for granted. Mm. Whatever the reasoning be, can't you discuss it? But you go ahead, give a directive, and then you come out to a statement, eh, we are going to... We are not puppets. We are not puppets. So we are not, we are not being unfair to government. Government is not being unfair to us. And... It's taking us, you know, it's taking us for a job. We're not going to allow it. Professor mm. Akudugu, so should government start all over, let's say, turning back the hands of time and start the entire process again in terms of engaging? Our demand is that we draw the letter. That's it. No engagement That's at this point. If they start all over and we say We are not that... going to engage. We are not going to engage. We draw the letter. And that's what will let us stop this demonstration. That's it. Mm. Professor Akudugu, um, I'm bringing you in on this. So I was asking earlier about the IMF requirement and the fact that we all know where we are now as a nation. We've gone back to the IMF, whether we like it or not. I know that Labour um, talked about it. We're against going back to the IMF, but this is where we are. We need that fund. And it's part of a requirement to be able to get that fund. Really, Hello? are we not being unfair to government? Yeah. Well, at this point, I think that, uh, as uh, yeah, Bampo said, I think it's rather the government that has been unfair to us. Look, uh, 
at the end of the month, I don't know if you steady your pay slip and see the amount of tax you pay. Go to game or go to uh, uh, the shopping mall, any shopping mall. Mm -hmm. Buy any groceries and see how much taxes you pay. Just check. Mm -hmm. We are also we are being sophisticated, uh, sophisticated with this with the taxes, mm -hmm. and it does not help. We are not being unfair. We just want to survive, and so we want to be able to pick your salary at the end of the month, and it will take you to the next month. We are living from hand to mouth, and so the IMF knows that workers are overtaxed. They know. And I don't think that adding tax on electricity consumption is the best way to go. And the bottom line is that those who have been paid to think and to come out with these policies mm -hmm. must always think about the repercussions of what they put as policies on the ordinary Ghanaian. And this, for us, simply will come and worsen our situation, and we don't want to get there. We are still paying COVID levy. We are paying all kinds of levies, all kinds of taxes. And you are bringing this again on board. Look, in real terms, our salaries have drastically decreased. In real terms, what you could buy with 1,000 Ghana cities two years ago, you can't get even half of it. So in nominal terms, you see that the salaries are up. They say we have increased by 23%, but in real terms, that increase in 25, 23% is actually not nothing. And so to say that everything that you do, any package that you make, you have to pay tax and you come and put it on electricity consumption again. When we are, when we are fighting for, you know, uh, expansion in electric, electricity coverage, we are talking about, you know, doing things, climate change and what have you. And these, some of these policies have implications for other alternative sources of energy. That mm -hmm. would also come with environmental issues and all that. So those in charge of making these policies must mm -hmm. always understand that there are interlinkages and there are implications across the sectors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is and that... at least consult, consult. And that is why it is important that we promote evidence-based decision making. Consult, do research. What is their research telling them? A whole ministry of energy, they should have a research unit, a robust research unit that would do that research. And even already pick what is acceptable to, 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 to the ordinary Ghanaian. To what extent can we sacrifice? What, to what extent is government sacrificing that we, the ordinary people, that is taken uh, at the end of the month, if I'm taking 1,000 Ghana cities, 30% of it is taken as tax. When I go to the market to buy, I pay other, you know, many other taxes. Mm -hmm. And government continues to operate as if we are in normal terms, but rather expect the, the citizens, we the workers, the common laborer, to, to rather understand. Mm -hmm. So I think that we, 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 we are being fair. In fact, okay. we have even been uh, in, in taking some of these decisions. Well, let me get a quick input from Dr. Kobna Donko, at least. He's a ranking member on the Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprises Committee in Parliament. Thankfully, he joins us via Zoom with some brief inter interventions on this uh, particular um, threat by Labour. And um, we'll hear from a lawyer, Bawadria, also, at least. He's been hearing all the perspective on this particular matter. He's been at the NLC before, amongst others. He has all the perspective when it comes to Labour. Dr. Kobna Donko, thank you so much uh, for your time. Well, you've been talking a lot this week or last week the past week or the past two weeks i should say about um, tewu strike also about the public sector a senior staff association of the public universities amongst others now we have this on our hands this big threat by labor 35 uh, groupings in terms of organized labor to with to protest at least starting from tomorrow if this vat on electricity 15 percent is not withdrawn totally at least this has gone through parliament the executive is now implementing amongst others uh, what's really your take in terms of this new development when it comes to organized labor and, and their issues with 15 percent vat 
gone through Parliament. It's never been through Parliament. The, the parent VAT Act has been in existence for a while. Definitely, can, definitely originated oh, from Parliament, Dr. Oh, Kwabna Donko. Please, can you let me make my point? Please make your point, uh, sir. Unless you want to take up the discussion. The parent VAT Act has been in existence for, some, for a while. Government, past and present, had until now never imposed VAT on domestic consumption. Let me again clarify. There is already VAT on industrial consumption. But on domestic consumption, since the VAT Act was passed, it has never been imposed on domestic consumption. And therefore, there is even the question as to whether, and I know ECG demanded this of government, that wouldn't it be better if they want to now impose VAT on domestic consumption for them to come by way of subsidiary legislation, a regulation that will implement that. Having said that, it is also ironic that the party that, that opposed the introduction of VAT, indeed, Kumi Prekom, was all about VAT. That's the biggest demonstration we've had in the Fourth Republic, it was against VAT. So isn't it ironic that this same party now in government wants to further extend VAT to domestic consumption of electricity? Yes. I heard the previous speaker talking about the Ministry of Energy. Mm -hmm. Let me again correct this. The Ministry of Energy is not responsible for taxation. And so the introduction of VAT on domestic consumption has nothing to do with the Ministry of Energy. It is a decision of the Ministry of Finance. Mm -hmm. So Kenneth Foriata and his ministry should be held responsible, not the Ministry of Energy. There is the question of the IMF program. Mm -hmm. The IMF does not impose. Let's get this clear. You go into negotiations, and then you accept terms that you can live with and propose others if you cannot live with the template they are bringing. And that is why they call it negotiation. So it is just too convenient to hide behind IMF to absorb the executive of responsibility. This is a power issue. And I believe if it is just about revenue, then we can make this revenue from placing more emphasis on efficiency in the power sector, efficiency of collection, efficiency of distribution, efficiency of generation. The whole of the power sector now have to look at efficiency. How do we generate the same amount of power and distribute same more efficiently? How do we collect? Remember, ECG has nearly 30% commercial and technical losses. If we reduce this quantum of law, mm -hmm. we will ramp up the revenue to make this VAT position unnecessary. I think government should be looking more at efficiency. Okay. Imposing more taxes on the people of Ghana um, isn't the best way to go, particularly uh, during this phase of our national development. For example, is there any justification why we should pay COVID tax? There's absolutely no justification. So we just pile on taxes and taxes and taxes. So let's rationalize some of the taxes. But I believe the government should withdraw the, the directive by the Ministry of Finance to GRE to collect VAT on domestic electricity consumption. So you stand with organized labor in terms of a total withdrawal of this particular directive to ECG and NETCO? Absolutely. It is not for nothing that the Rawlings regime, the Kufuor regime, the Atamus regime, the Mahama regime, and even the first term of the Akufuado regime never imposed this VAT on domestic consumption. Mm. It is not for nothing. And therefore, to unilaterally even attempt to do this without consultation 
without a public discussion to issue a fear is unfortunate and politically unwise. Mm. And it pays the people of Ghana when they are already down. I believe the government should withdraw it and let's look for some other means of making the energy sector far more efficient, reduce costs, and increase revenue. Mm. And we do this without impacting the economy or hurting the economy any further, uh, like we've been hearing uh, the excuse that has been given, you'd say? I mean, if we are improving efficiency, if we are putting in measures to reduce the cost of distribution, how does that hurt the economy? Mm. By being more efficient, are you hurting the economy? I don't think so. Mm. Well, you have your ears and eyes at least closer uh, to the corridors of power than we do because from where you sit in Parliament as ranking member uh, on this particular committee, really, would you, what would you say will be the difficulty at this point? Because we're hearing that it came up in Cabinet, um, there's a push for it to be removed. By the Finance Ministry is adamant on the removal of this particular 15% VAT and citing the IMF concerns amongst others. Um, from where you sit, at least Parliament is resuming next week. From where you sit, what really is the what really is the issue and the difficulty of the finance minister? Let, let, let's get this straight. No one, no Ghanaian voted for the finance minister. Ghanaians voted for a president, and Ghanaians voted for a legislature. So the finance minister is only a, a treasurer, the national treasurer, and she should comply by the directives. Of the president in cabinet. Mm. No one voted for the finance minister. Mm. So then, what would you say to those who say that organized labor has been unfair to government unduly uh, with this kind of pressure that is piling at a time <laughs> where the economy is already facing its own form of pressure? Is, is, this, the, is this the first time organized labor is put pressure on a government? Mm. If we are old enough, you remember the CCD, the SMCD, when the economy was a similar diet to it, organized labor students and civil society went on various demonstrations on the economy as well as on government. Okay. Yes, organized labor has been consistent. Indeed, I believe organized labor has given this government more of a holiday than any other government in the fourth republic. Mm. And it should not just be organized labor, it should be civil society as well. Because essentially, you cannot continue piling on taxes upon taxes, and we seem not to worry about the, even the efficient use of the taxes. Okay. We are issuing exemptions like the city to entities that should not be exempted. <laughs> Just the year to impose taxes on the small tax base. If we were expanding the tax base, then the, in, the taxes on the individual will come down because we're expanding the tax base to cover. Remember, we still have, we have ours is a transitional economy. We, we, we still have a relatively small formal sector and a large non-formal sector, and we are transitioning from non-formal to formal, mm -hmm. and therefore we should be thinking of means of extending fair, principled, progressive transition to the large non-formal sector, rather than just taking the easiest way out okay. to the well, Dr. Kobna Donko, we are indeed grateful uh, for your input um, tonight. And that's the ranking member on the Employment Committee in Parliament. We are grateful. Lawyer Bawadua has been with us um, through it all uh, from the beginning on Zoom. So let me bring you in, Lawyer Bawadua, on the possible legal challenges or opposition to this particular action that um, organized labor may face. Are there any, you would say? Uh, thank you very much and uh, good evening to you to your viewers and my colleagues. Um, first of all, let me lay a certain foundation, which is that it is important that we distinguish between what is happening now, the action that organized labor is taking now as against other actions. Mm -hmm. um, 
Normally, when organized labor decides to take some action, it's about their conditions of service. It's about their salaries, it's about their allowances, and related matters. Such an action will be called an industrial dispute. Now, this one is not an industrial dispute. It is not an industrial dispute because it does not relate to the terms and conditions of uh, members of organized labor. Organized labor operates in two folds. First, as a labor group interested in the welfare of their members. Second, as a civil society organization and a pressure group for that matter, interested in the people of Ghana, the welfare of the people of Ghana as a whole. So it is in this second leg that organized labor is taking up this action to pressurize government to reverse a policy that it believes will not augur well for the people of Ghana. And I expected other civil societies to follow suit. Now, other legal challenges. I, I, I'll say that the, the, the principal legal requirement is for organized labor to ensure that they have complied with the provisions of the public order act the act that requires that the police be notified of uh, an intended event that is likely to take place in the public and affect uh, members of the public and uh, listening to uh, mr bampo it would appear to me that that requirement has been met and if that is so i no longer see what legal impediments to be put on their way, except, of course, the police, for good reason, are able to secure a court injunction mm -hmm. to restrain organized labor from going ahead with uh, their demonstration. Uh, it, nothing has indicated so far that there is such an intention. And would, would you be surprised if that happens? Yeah, I'll, I'll be very surprised if that happens. Because uh, the conditions precedent for a court to grant such an order do not exist at this moment. God, there is no security threat, no national security threat, no threat to the public. In fact, this is an intended demonstration that is supposed to inure to the benefit of the public. And I, I, I don't foresee why the police will uh, go ahead to seek such an action. But, but not uh, even a national security threat because you would say, because uh, that on that day, we are told, at least on the February 13th, informal sector, formal sector, public, private, is a total shutdown of the economy. You would say that's not a national security threat? Yes, it's, there's not the national security threat properly so-called. Mm -hmm. These are persons who are coming to demonstrate peacefully to ensure that a policy that they believe does not augur well for the public will not inure to the benefit of the ordinary Ghanaian is reversed. They are not coming out in arms uh, you know, to shoot or destroy the public property and then uh, hurt others or, as it were, block rules uh, and related matters. So uh, there is no uh, national security threat, as, as, and I, that's my proper uh, understanding of the situation. Mm. Uh, what I think government should do is for government to quickly engage. I have heard Mr. Bambu said that they are not prepared to engage. But I think that we cannot have a solution to a dispute if there is no engagement. Indeed, perhaps, as part of the engagement process, government will, as it were, withdraw the policy. And I remember very well that I was a young man by then in the university when Kumi Preku demonstrations were, were, were ongoing on the streets of Accra. Government immediately withdrew that policy and subsequently engaged the stakeholders did some public education, you know, and the end result was that, notwithstanding that it was painful, that was, was subsequently introduced. I expected government to have learned from this uh, scenario that has happened in the past. Unfortunately, it appears to me that government did not, as it were, take into account the possible backlash that this, this uh, policy is now bringing. I, I, uh, one of the panelists said that Look, the thing about VAT mm -hmm. is value added tax. I am not an expert in VAT, but I have a basic understanding of VAT. And I agree with the panelists that, you see, when you consume electricity, 
what value have you added to it? Or is it the case that the producers of power have added some value to it, which requires that the people of Ghana should pay for? Clearly not. So I, I think I agree and I can see that government needs money to develop this country. But I think that the manner in which government is going about it is completely not the way to go. You cannot think that the only way to, to, to raise revenue for the development of this country is to continue taxing Ghanaians. And especially this particular one, that is, will hurt even low salary earners. If you are talking about people who consume electricity of about 30 kilowatts a month, mm -hmm. yeah. you are talking of almost everybody. Because very few, perhaps less than 1% of Ghanaians who consume electricity use only light, two light, uh, bulbs, and then almost yeah. everybody will have a, t uh, a television or at least three bulbs yeah, or more. Mm -hmm. So it is a party intended to tax everybody. So this argument that it is only supposed to tax a, a you know high level consumers is simply not correct. And okay. it is clear that this is a policy that is not going to wash. And I think that government must take a cue from the reaction that is taking place. I, I am in total support, I must say, with the action being taken by organized labor mm -hmm. because the tax as is intended to, to, to be passed now clearly is not in the interest of the people of Ghana who are now currently, apparently suffering the highest level of economic hardship that ever witnessed in, in this country. I, you see, so, so starting tomorrow, you are wearing your red armbands, you are coming out on the 13th if there is no air withdrawal? Oh, certainly, as a mm. Ghanaian who's suffering uh, the hardship that we are all going through. I mean, okay. I will be doing the seventh if, if I do not go onto the streets with uh, leadership and members of organized labor. Okay. I think every Ghanaian should, should, should take this yeah. seriously and make sure that government withdraws this immediately and now. Okay. Well, Mr. Bampuado, let me find out from you. Should government withdraw, at least, like you are asking that they do, are you willing now to engage? Yeah, of course, you they withdraw, we don't have a problem, we're going to engage. But not to do, if they don't withdraw, we're not going to engage. Mm. But if they withdraw and you engage, are you going to agree uh, to a 15%? Are you going to ask for a reduction? What exactly would you be we engaging We are not definitely, then? we're not going to agree to a 50%. There are other alternatives Okay. that we can look at. It's, or it's an issue of revenue. And we have other alternatives that we can suggest to them. If you want revenue, do A, B, C, and the end result will be the same. You know, you don't just look at, uh, 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 want to impose VAT on electricity. There are other alternatives that they have not looked at, mm. you know. And if they engage, we're going to suggest this to them. The end result will be the same. The important is that you want revenue. We're going to give you suggestions that you can have increase in revenue, and that's it. Mm. So, well, organized labor has already started thinking through the alternatives in terms of what you would give government if they withdraw and you start engaging, you say. Uh, are you able yeah, to, have a lot to of, tell us some of We have of a lot of alternatives, alternatives that we can apply. Like, you no, know, we can widen the uh, 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 base. You know, a lot of people are not really paying for electricity. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. So by just putting efficiency at ECG, not even if it just be more than enough, to close the gap or for them to have get the revenue that they want there are so many alternatives you know mm. that we can look at, uh, at not necessarily those who are religious and are paying and then you want to overburden them with a 15 percent vat vat is value added tax if they don't know tell them you know how many would vat is the value added tax what value have you added to our domestic consumption that you want to tax it 15 percent it's wrong. Mm. It's totally wrong. Yeah. If they withdraw the letter, we're going to sit down and give them alternatives. Thank you. I think uh, Professor Akudugu would agree uh, with you on this. Prof, you agree that once there's a withdrawal, uh, at least, um, you tag members, you would join organized labor uh, to now engage government. Professor Akudugu, okay. You have to unmute, unfortunately. Unmute, Prof. Sorry. That's fine, yeah. Prof. Yeah, yeah, I... Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. we can. Yeah, I agree 100% uh, with him.
and uh, we, we, we can provide uh, expert knowledge as to how to, to resolve some of these issues. One thing about increasing revenue is that you can increase revenue by also cutting cost. And so improve efficiency, cut cost, and then you are good to go. So it's, it's, I would always say that some of the problems with Ghana is not about lack of money. It's about how we use the money and efficiency in the application of those resources that uh, we have. If we are able to improve efficiency at ECG by just 20%, we'll be able to probably triple our revenues. And so mm -hmm. the best way to go about it is a proper diagnosis of what is causing all these huge losses that we have. And how do we uh, block those uh, loopholes to ensure that we're able to at least uh, generate enough or, so, so I say, be able to get, reduce the losses so that people can pay for what they consume. Okay. And when, when that happens, we'll be able to, 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 to solve some of these problems. Mm. Well, Mr. Mampuado, finally, uh, to the two of you, just before we wrap up on this, what if government does not heed your call, does not withdraw this particular communication on the 15% on the VAT to ECG and NETCO? You will start your protest and on the 15th, uh, 13th of February, the huge protest on that day. What then happens? Maybe I'll start with uh, Mr. Bampuado, then I'll, I'll finalize with you, uh, Professor Akudugu, on this. Mr. Bampuado, what will happen if government does not withdraw or heed your call and call your bluff? Well, the end result is that we just sit down in the house and look at it. We will not work. That's all. We're not going to work. Nobody's going to take us for granted. And this one, this time we're serious. Politicians cannot take us for granted. You know, work up we until when? Up until when? Because we will sit in the house. We will sit in the house and get paid. Uh, we will sit in the house. We are prepared. If the lady can even go, we don't care. We're going to sit in the house. That's it. So we'll after February 13, if government does not withdraw, you hold that protest. You continue to stay at home, and that staying at home would it include public, private? All of us will still have to stay at home. Like I said, we've all resolved. Mm -hmm. both public and private. Mm -hmm. This is not a, 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 a public affair. Yes. It's both public and private. That's why it's organized labor. Mm -hmm. That consists of three federations, TUC, Forum, GFL. It's all of us. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to come to a standstill, if that's what government wants. And if that's the language that government understands, we're going to give it to them. So on a typical day, at least uh, for us as media, we are supposed to report on everything that happens in the country. On a typical, uh, so on a typical were, day, on the 13th uh, of only, February, what am I supposed I'll to do? I'll only report on the demonstration that are going to sit in the house. If you really part of workers in Ghana, mm -hmm. cover the demonstrations and then go and sit in the house. Period. On the 13th mm -hmm. of February, I will just cover exactly. the demonstration and no work on that day. And then go and sit in the house. Yes, yeah. Wow, I'm sure our employers are, are listening. Professor Akudugu, uh, maybe I'll be, I should tell, I'm sure they are listening. We are hearing you loud and clear. Professor Akudugu, we'll wrap up with you on this. So, um, really, uh, your final words uh, in wrapping up on this on a typical day, all the way. I'm asking also if government does not withdraw, uh, what would you say um, all the way? What will happen? Yeah, I, I, I believe that government is listening and they should do the needful because the cost of as activating even just the demonstration to government is more than them reconsidering this, con this uh, decision. And so mm -hmm. uh, we are united in this and uh, governments will do the needful and just withdraw. Okay. Withdraw and then let's talk. Let's, let's, let's have that conversation on the best way to go about this. Okay. At the end of the day, we all know that we are, in, in, we, we are part of this country and we are in this situation and we need to get out of it. But we must get out of, of it uh, with all hands on deck, okay. not individuals. It is not when deciding for the masses without thinking about what exactly uh, the implications are for our own uh, well-being. Mm. Lawyer Bayadra, will we be surprised if government does not withdraw? Well, I think that is a, a decision for government to make. But... Uh, you see, I have worked with labor for many years, mm -hmm. many, many years indeed, and I know the things that labor takes seriously. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a single issue in recent time 
that labor has been so united like this one. Normally, government will be able to play labor among itself because of their little divisions. They may play GFL against TUC or TUC against the forum or the forum against GFL. But this is a matter that all aspects of organized labor have come together in unison to fight the government in this. And uh, from what I see, from my relationship with them, they are so united in this respect that government will be making a major mistake to go ahead, notwithstanding the opposition for organized labor. I expect government to negotiate strongly and seriously and quickly so with organized labor to okay. a solution bridge on this. I am sure that the, the results may not be good. Not only will they be hope, they will also be dim on the streets of uh, the cities of Ghana. And I don't think government can manage that. Well, the discussion will continue throughout the weekend. Hopefully, uh, we will not see that protest or get a report on that protest on February 13th. Um, if government withdraws that particular letter. Thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for your time this evening. I've had with me Isaac Bampuado, Executive Secretary of CLOCKSAC. We've also had Professor Mahmoudou Akudugu, President of UTAG. Uh, Dr. Kovna Donko also joined us along the line. He's a ranking member on Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprises Committee in Parliament. And of course, Lawyer Bawadua is a former NLC boss. We are grateful uh, for your time, gentlemen, here. Uh, on the probe. But for our radio audience, and Walk with Jesus is up next. There's more when you log on to myjoinonline.com. On behalf of the entire team, we say have a good evening. I am MFR Powell.